All right, advanced math A, here we go. We've got lesson 7.2.3, identifying quadrilateral, quadrilateral, quadrilaterals on a coordinate grid. It's a hard word. So anyways, this is our last lesson in Unit 7. So let's do this. So we're going to go ahead and make some quadrilaterals and then try to prove mathematically so that means we have to use math. You can't just look at it and go, oh, I think it's this. You have to know for sure, mathematically. So first one, I've got three different linear equations here. They are going to create a quadrilateral. So let's go ahead and graph these three lines. So let's see, first one, let's make, that looks about right. And I've already done this one before, so I know that it's going to be in the first quadrant. So that looks about right. All right, so I'm going to graph these one, two, three, four lines there. Let's do it in pencil, and then I can highlight our actual line when we finish it. All right, so the first one has a y-intercept of three, so I'm going to go up one, two, three, boom. Okay, and then it has a slope of negative 3 over 2, so I'm going to go down 3 and over 2 right there, and then down 3 over 2 right there. All right, that should be enough for me to get a pretty good line out of this. There you go. I was a little bit off, but we're forgiving today. All right, next one. We've got slope of negative 3, or y-intercept of negative 3. And then a slope of 3 over 2. So we're going to go up 3 and over 2. And then up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2. There we go. So there's our next line. And that's close enough. All right, third one. Slope, or uh, y-intercept is 9. Why do you keep on saying slope? I don't know. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I think that's 9. All right, its slope is negative 3 over 2, so we're going to go down 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2, and then down 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2. All right. Marvelous. We're almost there. The next one, our y-intercept is 3, that point right there, and then we're going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 2. That point and up one, two, three over two. There we go. All right, so these four lines have bounded a quadrilateral. So my quadrilateral is this shape right here. Got the quadrilateral. All right, so there's my quadrilateral. We're going to try to prove what kind of shape that is. Now, you might be looking at it and go, oh, I know what it is. Don't even think that. Let's just start looking at the math and let the math tell us what it is. Okay, I'm going to label this just for reference. This is going to be A, this is B, this is C, this is D. All right, so I'm going to find the slopes and the distances of these four sides. So let's start with AB. So I'm going to look for the slope and the distance. Okay, slope from A to B. It goes up 1, 2, 3, and over 2. So 3 over 2. Distance. Remember, we just take our two slope numbers and square them because this is the slope triangle where we've got the change in y over the change in x. So this would be 3 squared plus 2 squared. So this is a 9 plus 4. 9 plus 4 is 13. I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 13. Next one, b to c. Slope, it goes down 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2. So its slope is is it down 3 over 2? 
One, two, three, one, two, yep. Down three and over two. It's got the same two numbers, so it's going to have the same distance. We're still going to square three and two. Remember, we're not going to worry about the negatives because anytime you square a negative, it still comes out as positive. So nine into four again, we get the square root of 13. Next one, CD. So on CD, the slope is up one, two, three over two. I see a pattern here. And of course, we should know by now that that's going to give us 13. And then AD, we've got a slope of down 3 over 2. And by now, we should know this is going to be the square root of 13 as well. All right, so what do we notice with our slopes? Well, I notice that these are not opposite reciprocal. We're not making 90 degree angles here. But the opposite sides have the exact same slope. So I'm going to put a triangle right here. This side and this side are parallel to each other. <coughs> and then this side and this side over here those sides are parallel to each other. So right now it's looking, oh, I've got a parallelogram. Not so fast. Look at our distances. All of the distances are the same. Okay, so that means that this side, this side, this side, and this side are all the same. So which shape do we have where all four sides are the same, but they're not 90 degree angles? So this is not a square because we're not making 90 degree angles. So look through your list of different uh, shapes that we did the other day, and you would probably find that this is a rhombus. And our reasoning for it being a rhombus is it has four congruent sides. And the opposite sides... are parallel. So there's the proof that it's a rhombus. And that's what we're going to do on the next two problems. All right, let's get to this next one. This one, we don't have to make the lines, which is kind of nice. Looks like everything's showing up in the first quadrant. Also kind of nice. All right, let's go ahead and put this one down. So A is at 0, 2. So 0 and then up 2. There's A. B is at 1, 0. 1, 0 right there. There's B. C is at 7, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3. Lastly, we got D at 4, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so you might be looking at it. You're like, oh, I think I know what it is. That's why, yeah, you can think you know what it is, but don't write anything down until you can prove it. Prove it. All right, so we're going to find the four sides, A, B, B, C, C, D, and A, D. And we're going to look at their slopes. We're going to look at their distances. Start with slope. A, B goes down 2 over 1. So in our distance formula... We're going to square 2 and square 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. BC is going to go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it goes up 3 and over 6. That does reduce to 1 half. 
Now, I'm not going to go ahead here and square 1 and 2. I have to square the original numbers because that's where the slope triangle is. The slope triangle goes up 3 and over 6, and we're doing the Pythagorean theorem from those two numbers. So you do need to reduce this one, but also you need to find your distance using these two numbers. So I've got 3 squared plus 6 squared, so 36 plus 9, that's what, 45? I think. Pretty sure. All right, moving on. CD. This one goes down one and over one, two, three. So down one over three. So our distance, we would square one and we'd square three. One plus nine, that's ten. Last one, AD. AD goes up 1, 2, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. So up 2 and over 4. That does reduce to 1 half, but remember, when we're finding our distance, we use these non-reduced numbers. So that's going to square 2 and square 4. So 4 plus 16 would be 20. All right, are all, any of these sides congruent? No. So the sides aren't really telling any story here. But look at our slopes. I'm noticing a couple things. First thing I notice, this slope and this slope are exactly the same. That means they're parallel. So this side has to be parallel to this side. Slope of 1 half slope one half. Those two have the same slope. I notice one more thing. This one and this one, which are right next to each other, are opposite reciprocal slopes. And then AB and AD are right next to each other, and those are opposite reciprocal slopes. That's telling me that this is a 90 degree angle here, and this is a 90 degree angle there. So what kind of shape is this? Well, it's definitely a trapezoid because these two lines are parallel. And since both of these angles are 90 degrees because we have opposite reciprocal slopes, then we can call it a right trapezoid. All right, what's our reasoning? We had one pair of parallel sides. And those sides were AD and BC. And we had two right angles. Uh, at angle A and angle B. And we found that by opposite reciprocal slopes. All right, we got one more problem to complete together, my friends. Quadrilateral. Looks like everything's nice and in the first quadrant again. All right, so W is going to be at 0, 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my W at 0, 5. X is at 2, 7. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Why is it 5, 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 7. Z is at 5, 1. So 5 and 1.
All right, let's try to find out what kind of shape it is. Don't just assume. If you assume, you'll probably make a mistake. So let's write down all of our sides. Wx, xy, yz, and wz. We're going to look at their slopes and their distances. So for w to x, this goes up to over 2. That reduces to a slope of 1. Case of our distance, we do 2 squared plus 2 squared. 4 and 4 makes the square root of 8. Uh, ZY, this does not go up or down, so it's 0 over 1, 2, 3. 0 over 3, which would be 0. Okay, so at this point, you can just count out the distance, just a distance of 1, 2, 3, because it is horizontal. So its distance is 3. YZ. This one goes down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and over 0. That's an undefined slope. And the distance, since it's vertical, we can just count that out as a distance of 6. And then finally, W to Z, this goes down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it goes down 4, over 5. So our distance for that one is going to be 4 squared plus 5 squared. So 16 plus 25. 41? 16 plus 25, 40, I think it's 41. All right, let's see what we got. Um, none of these are congruent. And I know some of you looked at it and go, oh, it's a kite. I can tell. No, it's not. That is not a kite. Square root of 8 and 3 are not the same. Remember, 3 is the square root of 9. So these two sides are not the same. They look like it, but they're not. And then these two sides are not the same. This is the square root of 36, and this is the square root of 41. That thing's not a kite. None of these sides are the same. Okay, let's look at the slopes. Are any of the slopes the same? No. Do we have any opposite reciprocal slopes? Well, actually, yes. We've got 0 and undefined is a right triangle. That's opposite reciprocal. So we have one 90-degree angle, and that's it. So what's the best name that we can call this? Just a quadrilateral. You might have been thinking right quadrilateral, but we don't actually use that terminology. We don't just call any quadrilateral with a 90 degree angle a right quadrilateral. It's technically correct. It's just something we don't do. So if we can't prove it's one of our more special, our more specialized shapes like a square, or a rhombus, or a rectangle, or a kite, or a trapezoid for a quadrilateral, we'll just call it quadrilateral. That's it. That's as far as we can go. That's as much information as we can prove. We had no sides congruent. We didn't have anything parallel. And we only had one right angle in there, and that's it. So we'll just call it a quadrilateral. All right, that is all, my friends. We have finished in record time. You guys have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.